They changed the name. The new guy had a crappy attitude. I think that's why it's closed now. Oh my. I'll tell you, I don't know what to do about this now. You got a storm drain here, covered it's been broken, and a sidewalk here. And that is at, what is it, the intersection of, there, cover that section number. And North Island. I don't know why y'all ain't fixed this sidewalk or replaced this scene. Been a minute. That's a safety hazard right there. Animals, around everything else, including even robots and artificial intelligence. And as you would imagine, this is raising some concerns of what it means for the value of human life, not to mention the very basic ways we live. What happens if you can't eat a plate of food without being called, you know, called out for genocide? And what does it mean? Well, I can tell you right now, this does tie into the future of bioengineered food and things like that, which is, of course, part of the takeover of America's farmlands. And also, it brings up a big issue that if everything is treated on the same value as a human life, then what is the value of a human life? Let me show you this first. Breitbart says the International Criminal Court should add ecocide to its brief alongside genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes to criminalize the side effects of farming, fishing, and energy production, a green activist argued during the annual World Economic Forum meeting in Davos, Switzerland. The, now, the ally of Greta Thornburg, the CEO of Stop Ecocide International, Jojo Meta, demanded during a WEF Davos panel called Where Nature Meets Conflict on Tuesday that a new international criminal category of quote-unquote ecocide to prevent the mass damage and destruction of nature you know, should just be enacted. And this woman, Meta, who co-founded Stop Ecocide back in 2017 alongside the late green legal activist Polly Higgins, said at the Globalist World Economic Forum meeting, quote, what our organization and other collaborators aim to do is to have this recognized legally as a serious crime because one of the issues that pervades oh this discussion is that we have a culturally ingrained habit of not taking damage to nature as seriously as we take damage to people and property. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Yeah, that's just the crazies over at the World Economic Forum. And, you know, that's just one panel. That's one panel. It does not necessarily mean they're ever going to do it. How could they possibly try to criminalize the act of cutting down a tree or pulling up a plant or, you know, maybe farming for some kind of, you know, corn or tomatoes or something like that? How could they make it illegal? How could they protect these things using the crimes of genocide if you kill too many dang plants? Well... I'll tell you right now, it sounds far out, but there's actually already programs in place on this. In fact, it adopted into the laws of some countries in the world currently as we speak. There are laws on this already. Now, the debate on this is what's framed as personhood. That's one of the things they call it. And this is being proposed right now. Remember, this individual says, you know, we're trying globally to do this. It sounds crazy, right? But it's being proposed and taken seriously as a way right now to grant human rights status to plants, animals, and again, even artificial intelligence. You turn off your, your little creepy robot, well, maybe you killed it, and uh, you're guilty of, of, I don't know if they call it ecocide, but guilty of the killing of a life of, of an artificial intelligence. Under this system, the, the poop they're pushing right now, killing a plant, Killing an animal would be similar to killing a human being. And even, again, artificial intelligence could be granted legal protections through this. In fact, it's already being done in some cases using some legal loopholes. Now, this is The Guardian talking about some of these existing programs and the push to extend it. 
This was in October of 2022. And they said this, granting legal rights and protections to non-human entities, such as animals, trees, and rivers, is essential if countries are to tackle climate breakdown and biodiversity loss, experts have said. These people the authors are crazy. Of titled Law in the Emerging Bio Age say legal frameworks have a key part to play in governing human interaction with the environment and biotechnology. Ecuador and Bolivia have already enshrined rights for the natural world, while there's a campaign to make ecocide a prosecutable offense at the International Criminal Court. Now, briefly on this, remember, I just showed you what happened at the World Economic Forum. People laughed, oh, they'll never do that. They'll never make ecocide a crime that is prosecutable in the International Criminal Court, right alongside genocide and, you know, mass murder of civilians. They would never do that. They're doing it. it they're they're pushing it right now. In fact, again, in Ecuador and Bolivia, they've already put these rights in place protecting the quote-unquote natural world. And as part of this push, the report for the, the Law Society, the professional body for solicitors... The Amazon, they cut all the trees wells, down. ...while they're exploring how the relationship between humans and Mother Earth might be reciprocated in the... Sorry, uh, recalibrated in the future. Now, of course, this individual, Dr. Wendy Schultz, a futurist and report co-author who said this, quote... There is a growing understanding that something very different has to be done. If our children are going to have a planet to live on that is in any way pleasant, much less survivable. So this is an expanding trend. It is happening as fast as any of us would. Is it happening as fast as any of us would want? Possibly not, which is why it's important to get the word out. Now, remember, for example, when the Green New Deal was proposed, AOC was like, we're going to stop the farting cows. That was actually the report, by the way, in the first draft. We have to tear down and rebuild every building in the entire United States. We need to do all these things to save ourselves from the genocidal potential of a great disaster brought You're upon us changed. by our poor living habits, by greenhouse gases, by driving cars, by just living Insanity. your normal life and eating the food on your plate. Because all that food and all those farmers, they're generating greenhouse gases. They created an enemy everywhere in the world. Now, communism has always done this. There's always an external enemy. It's the kulaks. It's the wealthy peasants. It's the intellectuals. It's the landowners. Hitler said it was the Jews, right? They always had an enemy that they focused the entire population on and then used that narrative now, to human beings. Redo and restructure the entire society to launch their revolution, to bring about the change they wanted, to justify their actions of seizing the means of production from the common man and placing it under a new social structure that's not doing it to persecute you or to carry out genocide, but instead to protect you from the disaster and the people they say wish to harm you. That has always been the narrative. And here you see them doing it again. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm here. The way that even deals with entities that, of course, which would make it so you can't even do much in the entire landmass because of the mycelium growth. Uh, if you understand that in some areas, like redwood trees, they're interconnected through their roots, then you could have one giant living entity that is untouchable, that has been granted the rights of a human being. And they believe they can do this for other things because, again, it gives them protection, similar to what you and I enjoy. Other people want personhood status for animals because they view them as lives. And, of course, you know, when it comes to artificial intelligence, well, look, we can watch sci-fi movies already out there uh, playing with this idea. What makes us human? What, what, defer, what, 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 what is it that gives human beings the rights of human beings? If you say that it's a, because we're a living entity, well, animals are living entities. Plants are living entities. What's the difference between an animal and a plant if we're all living entities? If you're saying, well, it's because humans are intelligent, well, what does it mean that if a computer can demonstrate what looks like a similar level of intelligence as a human being? We are... Two young men 
kidnapped, murdered, raped the dead body of uh, one of the younger cousins of one of these men and made, the, made a big mistake where one of them dropped his glasses, which was a very rare prescription, and the glasses were then used to track it back to the individual, and both of them stood trial. During that trial, there was a major debate in America, and it tied, of course, there was the legal debate. Oh, you know, these individuals, how could, how could this happen, right? These two extremely intelligent, very you know, young men with probably very bright futures from Nick wealthy Ophelia. homes who should have had no reason to commit a crime like this. Why would they do it? And the argument that was raised during the court and socially in the United States at the time was very interesting. They said that schools are teaching kids that there is no God. Schools are teaching kids that there is no soul. If there's no God and no soul, then why should they care? If there's no afterlife, no consequence for evil, then well, who cares? What, what does it matter? If he can get away with a crime, why not commit it? And it raised the question of what is good and what is evil. If children are taught, there is no such thing as good and evil. Now, this ties, of course, into the question we're now grappling with, because I'd say the answer to these questions, what's the difference between a human and an animal? What's the difference between, you know, an AI system and a human being? If an AI system is intelligent, right, it's smart, it can do math faster than us, it can pull up documents and legal papers and books faster than we can. It can create art and movies and all kinds of things. Unless you believe in the existence of the human soul. And that's the key difference. We have reached this stage as a society because we've cheapened the value of human life. We have degraded the value of human life. And when people no longer believe that the human life has some kind of God-granted rights, that we have rights given to us by God himself, which is, of course, the basis of the Declaration of Independence and the basis of the concepts of human rights, notably in the entire liberal world order that we live under. The entire system whereby, whereby we believe the nature of government is to guard our God-given rights and not for us to, to serve some ty tyrannical leader. If we cheapen this, then that entire system is what's at risk. Now, Again, folks, we have a lot of stuff going on right now with this, and, you know, we have things that, like, you know, identity politics, kids can identify as cats and dogs now. Uh, a grown man can say that he identifies as a deer, that he's a wild deer, and he can run around the forest dressed like a deer, and you have to call him a deer, or he might get charged with a crime. They can say that they're a horse. There are, there are people, literally as we speak, who identify as horses. And look, the, look, you could say it's just a crazy individual. I, you know what? Do you, you do you. Don't, don't involve me in it, but you know, you do you. Just don't make me call you a horse or a cat or a dog. But these actually have broader implications. If the identities that these persons have conferred upon themselves are recognized as being legally legitimate, and we have to, under the law, you know, say, okay, that's a, that's a cat, I guess, uh, that's, a, that's a tree person. Mm. Uh, I don't believe it, but I don't want to get thrown in prison. Then it raises the question as well, if a person becomes a cat, if a human being becomes a dog, if a person becomes a tree, then does that mean that the individuals in turn have surrendered their human rights? Because as we know, a tree or a cat or a dog or a deer or a stock of corn, these things don't have human rights. And so if legally we have to recognize these people as, you know, being what they claim to be, but they identify as, does it then limit them to the rights of a tree or a cat or a dog or a deer? And can you hunt them? Can you take them as pets? Can you cut them down? What does it mean, right? These are the legal questions we're going to start grappling with as this, frankly, general madness and this social insanity that is sweeping the world right now is able to stand. I'd say the underlying question of how do we live as humans if we can't eat plants or animals or use natural resources for our daily lives, what does it mean for us? If they begin conferring rights on, let's say, natural gas, the, this gas store has been given the rights of a human being through a wonderful LLC. We have registered a corporation that these, this natural gas deposit is now protected with basic human rights, and you cannot touch it. You can't harm it, or this nab gas deposit will sue you, or at least on behalf of the lawyers who are guarding it, who are the craziest individuals known to man, right? 
What does it mean for human beings if we are no longer allowed to use the natural environment as the basis to sustain our lives? I would say that this will undermine the basic concept of the value of human life. And I'd question as well, what is humanity? And what, what are human rights in that case? If every single thing in the world is lifted to the status of being human, if we regard an animal and a plant and an AI and whatever else as having the same value of a human life, I would argue that we will not recognize these things as actually having the same value. Instead, what will happen is that the value of human life will be lowered to be on par with that of a plant or an animal or a tree or an AI. Well, that's all for tonight. Thank you so much for being here. And as always, please take care of yourselves, stay informed, and stay free. Nice out here tonight. Weather's not bad. Uh, oh, Lord. About took me out here this time uh, about three or four days ago. <laughs> It was cold, and temperature would drop like a rock. No, no shade, no uh, clouds. <laughs>